Bevenidos, worldwide fans of the planet's hottest entertainment with an edge. I mean Fuego here, welcoming you once again to my namesake program in Fuego Entertainment. Another Rapido Fuego review here in the month of October where I've tried to delve at least here and there into stuff that has like the tiniest bit of a spectacular connection, but I mean, really, at the end of the day, I don't cover that stuff here, that's all on the horror show, but this is one that would have no business over there because it is 100%, really, at the end of the day, a romantic comedy with the slightest bit of sci-fi tinged in, and just because there is, and, well, we will get into it. We are talking, save yourselves, and I say it with just that sort of zest and fervency because of the fact that this uh, has an exclamation point in the title, so go figure. But uh, yeah, it's really more so than anything else at the, at the core and importance of it. It's just kind of snidely and, um, you know, kind of tongue-in-cheekly poking fun at our addiction to our devices, internet connection, social media, and all of that different stuff, whether it's, you know, for, you know, keeping up with friends and family, and, you know, meeting somebody to date, or, you know, find a new recipe, or a trail to hike, or, you know, whatever it may be. It's, uh, it's also very necessary for a lot of people's work, most notably our two leads who have seemingly been dating for a while. We have Sue and we have Jack, and they have, they're happy, but they're just, maybe not as happy as they could be. I, I mean, it's not like something wrought with misery, but there is just that, okay, you know, is this, it, are we together but apart? Are we distancing ourselves a little bit more so than we normally would because we're so shackled to our devices? And that commentary resonates with me because my lady loves her phone. A lot of my friends the same way. I have my time in the sun as well, so I'm not virtuous in that regard. I, I mean, it's just, it's the way of things at this particular point, but I do feel like there is an importance to really try to distance yourself at times, but what this couple decides to do after being at this wedding and reconnecting with an old friend of Jack's is to go up to a cabin he is restoring in upstate New York because they're they're like Brooklyn hipsters and, <laughs> you know, without you know, getting like too scathing or poking fun or anything like that because of the fact that these two, they, they embrace it and they embody it and the script obviously writes them as such so they're like we're gonna we're gonna disconnect we're gonna go and spend a week away from society and any sort of connectivity to it through the internet and they forewarn everybody they have an amusing voicemail that they put together that some of their family members are like oh yeah you guys are assholes sort of thing but uh, yeah, so they decide to do this complete disconnect and try to reconnect a little bit more as a couple because there's various scenes early in the film where they're both, they're like sitting on the couch together, but just dur, 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 dur. I mean, how many times back when people frequently went to restaurants or whatever, you would see two people, presumably a couple, and they're not even interacting. They're just sitting on their devices. And I even have like, a magnet on my refrigerator where it's like, you know, turn off your phones, actually talk to each other, pretend it's 95, live, you know? And uh, yeah, there has been an inherent essence of just impersonal interaction that has transpired since this whole revolution of these devices that yes, they, they connect us but disconnect us to a degree. They do bring us uh, a wealth of information but also a lot of static and bullshit and stuff that uh, distracts us and isn't really enriching in a lot of ways to our lives. Even if there is still a lot of stuff that does do that and a lot of people use it for work, you know? And uh, yeah, it is what it is in that regard but it's, it's that double-edged sword, obviously, which is why they wanted some time to decompress and just you know, just expand and hopefully uh, improve their relationship. So they head up north. They're in the upstate New York. You know, you know, just north north of the city, completely just uh, off the grid, so to speak. And as they're in that particular place, an alien invasion starts to go down. And yes, this is not super spoilery or anything because it's in the trailer. They have deliberately marketed this film as such. And there's a lot of amusing moments seeing how they react to these situations of uh, just inherent danger around them, these poofs, as you would call them. You see them in the trailer. They look like, I guess a poof is a fuzzy footrest, but it's really somewhere between um, a Krite from the Critters movies, and uh, it, 
I don't know. I, it, but yet, not of the scarific variety. They're, they're pretty much... Uh, it, you don't really see much beyond these like poofy little footrest ball sort of things. And uh, yes, it, it it just plays up the comedy from start to finish. Great chemistry, uh, very, very just endearing cuteness between our two leads because they're really some of the only people that we see throughout the entirety of the movie, especially in the back half of it. Or like, man, even more than that, two, two thirds of it. So uh, this also to give some additional information, it was supposed to have a theatrical release and it did not receive it, unfortunately, um, on the wide scale, I'm assuming that they had hoped for. Um, and yet this still is of that kind of art house, kind of indie sensibility, but with decent production values, at least for, for the budget, I, I would assume. And uh, yeah, it got this kind of dueling thing where since we still don't have theaters open in New York and, you know, a good chunk of California and various other states. So it's in select theaters where the states are actually, or the county specifically, because I think it's a case by case basis, have allowed them to open. And then it just a few days later had a uh, VOD rollout. So I rented it on Redbox for like six bucks, but it's also on all the other usual suspects like Prime and, you know, Vudu, uh, YouTube, uh, probably Apple as well. So yeah, that's how I checked it out. And I was, I was pleasantly happy with this one. I mean, the thing that I will stress though, is that in, in the, in the third act of this film and when it relies on just that that romantic that rom <laughs> when it relies on that romantic aspect, everything is much more compelling than when we get the genre sensibilities of the sci-fi and uh, when it when it veers away from them just and they're they're just amusing kind of impish timidness and you know not wanting to use guns to go after these creatures and and various other things uh and also when they find a, a baby like you know a little bit later in the film without getting too much into all of that that stuff is good nose is super itchy but um it's when it's when we get into like the explanation a little bit more so of why this invasion is happening and it's still very much self-contained you know, just to keep that in mind, don't expect anything of a big budget crazy variety because um, it, it never really gets there. It still stays as a very personal story, which I appreciated. Um, but really, without spoiling the finale, uh, the ending of this movie made me like it significantly less. And that's really, I'm going to leave it at that. That's all I'm going to say because, you know, disliking how things are tied up or the lack thereof. Um, it doesn't necessarily like just make you hate everything about the journey, but um, yeah, sometimes you are, it, it kind of sheds a little bit less of an enjoyable light on all of the you know previous proceedings. And uh, that's unfortunately what this movie did. So I did really love it, great performances. Uh, the, the music was just a little too um, nose in the air hipsterish for me and uh, yeah, but beautifully shot, great drone shots. I'm not sure if this actually was upstate New York or if they were, you know, somewhere in Canada. Uh, but uh, yes, it was it was definitely gorgeous. I'm assuming east side of the United States or at least North America. Uh, very funny and just great, uh, just just a great fun couple that you were rooting for and uh, just laughing at some of their bumbling throughout. So that that stuff was all very good. It was an enjoyable film, but I definitely would have given it higher marks. This could have inched towards a Fuego film, if not for the finale. And so just to give it a clear cut decision right here, this is definitely a Bueno film. It's it's three and a half on my uh, letterbox. If you guys want to just see, I, I don't do full on reviews on letterbox, but I do rate everything that I watch on there. So if you want to see all of the films released in 2020 or everything I watched in 2019 and even back to 2018 when I first started that, um, yeah, this was a three and a half. But since I don't do half ratings here on my personal channel, it, it has to slink back to being just a bueno film, but still, it was good. I, I enjoyed it a lot, and uh, I'm curious what else both of these uh, actors have done. I, I believe it was a first time, at least for feature, uh, writing and directing team. And uh, yeah, I mean, watch it, make up your own mind if you like that whole romantic uh, comedy aspect with a little sprinkling. I mean, 
just as, as far as some of the goofiness, very similar vibes to, to the movie Evolution, which I can't remember if that was Harold Ramis or if that was Reitman, but uh, yeah, that had David Duchovny, Julian Moore, the, the Make 7 Up Yours guy, uh, Orlando Jones. So as far as just the way of looking at an, a, just an alien sort of presence around, it definitely echoed some of those vibes, but retrofit it and just have it be about the, you know, cute little couple. So that's my verdict, guys. Three out of five. I've been Fuego, y'all have unrad status. Uh, you can find me on all social media sectors at Jaime Fuego, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube. A like, a share, and a subscribe means a heck of a lot. Did this review leave you more inclined to actually check it out? Let me know if that was the case. And if you have seen it, give some thoughts uh, on that as well. Do you think I'm off basis? Am I a little too judgmental about that ending specifically? Uh, also, if you like stuff that isn't just, I mean, if you like alien stuff that's actually scary, if you dig The Thing or, um, you know, Cameron's Aliens or anything like that, you definitely need to get over to my main channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash the horror show channel. That's where, uh, yes, we're in the midst of all kinds of badass, spectacular coverage. We're going to be looking at The Haunting of Blind Manor, as well as uh, Books of Blood, the new uh, thing that, uh, yeah, Hulu has from uh, Mr. Clyde Barker for his original uh, collection of crazy stories. So lots of fun over there. Support here or over yonder definitely means a hell of a lot. So uh, that's all for it, uh, peeps. So I've been Fuego, and until the reel of Ka comes around once more, hasta luego, sin amigos, constant readers and viewers alike, say thank you for listening to my palaver here today. I hope that we get to share more of it sooner rather than later. And until then, remember to uh, stay home and uh, watch more movies. Show some support in this uh, dire state that the uh, theater industry is in.